we are so glad that you have decided to join us uh, this morning during our uh, 11 o'clock uh, worship hour. Our songs this morning are, of course, in celebration of Independence Day. So if you would join me for our call to worship, America, my country, tis of thee. morning I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ I hope that you feel welcome because you are uh, that you belong because you do and that God has a plan and purpose for your life because he does we want to just thank you so much for being your faithfulness and your presence online you've been so faithful and 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 participating in the services when we've been uh, live streaming the services thank you so much for your faithfulness thank you for the way you have uh, continue to support the church financially. Uh, you've been so good about and so faithful about that as well. So we give praise to God for you today, uh, thanking you for just uh, joining us. And if not in, in person, you certainly are joining us with your presence online, and we appreciate it so much. This is uh, Independence uh, Day weekend, and so you'll see that the services today will have a patriotic theme, and uh, you'll hear a lot more about our country and uh, the blessing it is to be an American in our services today. We'll get an opportunity today to celebrate the Sacrament of Holy Communion. I hope that you had an opportunity to come by this past week and get a, a, a communion uh, set. Uh, if you did not, uh, would, now would be a good time to see if you can go to your refrigerator and try to find a, uh, some grape juice and uh, go to the cabinet and get some crackers so we'll uh, celebrate the Sacrament of Holy Communion together later on during the worship service at so having said all of that, we're going to sing again a familiar uh, patriotic hymn. And so we're going to let Brother Kevin come and lead us through this. Would you join me in our hymn of praise this morning, the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Oh. 
where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and in life everlasting. Amen. I want to remind you that during this time, during the worship service, we normally receive the morning offering. We want to encourage and thank you again for the faithfulness you have shown in these past few weeks. You're giving online uh, in record numbers. You're also mailing in, um, uh, mailing in envelopes with your donations uh, at record numbers, and we appreciate that so very much. Um, again, I express my gratitude for that. And we're going to ask Christina that she's going to play an offertory right now. indeed um, the Independence Day weekend and and we intentionally designed this service to be very patriotic um, we live in I'm convinced the greatest nation in all the world um, we've seen uh, no small amount of protest across the nation in these in these past few weeks um, 
Not every country allows that. Um, there are young women and men who defend our country and its way of life, who, um, who have risked their lives, even given their lives for freedoms, such as the freedom to protest. Um, a lot of those who protest have not been willing to give that same sacrifice, even to commit themselves to a, a few years in service of our armed forces so that we can defend our country and its way of life. To come to this part of the service today, I want to ask you where you are to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I'm learning that um, what's important to me in life is that I stand up for the national anthem and I kneel at the cross. Those are two important things to me today. So I invite you to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Then following that immediately, our special music will uh, be done by Kevin today as he will sing our national anthem. Who join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave you may be seated This morning, I want to spend some time with you in the Word of God and the Scripture. As we read uh, a familiar passage of Scripture to you, per probably, it's in the 8th chapter of the Gospel of John. As we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion today, we'll, we'll find our attention directed to, uh, to this Scripture lesson. And I want to call your attention to this reading because, and I want to ask you to listen carefully. After all, this is the reading of God's Holy is its inspired in his inerrant word. So to the Jews, in the eighth chapter of the Gospel of John, beginning with verse 31, it reads this way. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold in my teaching, you are really my disciples, and then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants, we have, not been in, we have not been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Would you take a moment to bow your heads and close your eyes, and would you pray for me as I pray with you? My gracious God, I pray that you would hide me in the shadow of your cross so that these, your people, would hear your voice above mine and so that they might discern the difference between the wisdom of God and the knowledge of a man. And, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart let them be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. For you alone, Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. 
come, Holy Spirit, and just have your way in us and through us and in spite of us today. I pray that we would use this time to reflect upon the blessings that we have, not only living in a country where we have freedom of speech and freedom of religion and freedom of assembly, even freedom to disagree. But Lord, we also have this freedom in Christ that we can be set free from our sins and the penalty of our sins. So God, use this time together. Let it settle on our hearts and in our minds. And we, Lord, may our lives show forth celebration, but also conviction in coming to know Jesus Christ as the Lord of our life and the Savior of our soul. And Lord, I ask all of this in the precious and perfect and in the powerful name of Jesus, who is called the Christ. And let all God's people say, Amen. So I want to share some thoughts with you today about being born again. Born again to be free. Born again by the Spirit of God. Born again to be free. I love the words of, um, I love the words of that song that, Christina played for the offertory today. But I also love the words of that song that we sang as a hymn this morning. We call that song America. I remember singing that song when we were growing up as, as small children in Gerard Elementary School. There were some of the first things that we did each morning. We had a prayer. We had a prayer in school. I know that seemed like a foreign concept to people nowadays, but we actually began the day with prayer. We also began the day with a pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And then we also sang this song, My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. Let freedom ring. Let freedom ring. That has a great sound to it for, for me. In fact, I, I have this sense of, of patriotism and, and a sense of blessing. It, it swells up in me every time I, I hear that song that Christina played on, on the piano today for the, for the offertory. God bless the USA. Lee Greenwood's song goes on to say, I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free. We do enjoy freedoms here that no other country on earth enjoys. Yet even in America, in this land of the free and the home of the brave, there are a lot of instances in which freedom, our freedom is not absolute. For example, I, I have freedom only to the extent that my actions do not infringe upon another person's rights. Or as the old folks used to tell me as I was growing up, that my freedom ends where your nose begins, your freedom ends when my nose begins. So we're not so free that we can do whatever we want to do if it infringes upon somebody else's rights. But also speaking in a spiritual sense, it can also be said there are other limitations to our freedom as well. First of all, we are never so free as to be above and beyond the gracious limits that God places on our conduct, on human conduct, in the precepts and the principles and the commandments and the guidelines that we find in His Word in the Holy Bible. We are never so free that we are above and beyond the commandments, the, 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 the laws of God. In the, in, the, uh, in the Holy Bible. When we transgress against God's biblical principles of morality, when we do things that, that God's Word says is wrong, then we've abused a privilege that God has given us, a privilege of free will. He gives us a choice to make decisions about what is right, about doing what's right or doing what is wrong. And those times when we step outside those gracious limits that God gives us in the Holy Bible, those are sins. That's called sin. I think there's a lot of wisdom in the words of Peter Marshall and his prayer before the United States Senate. 
Peter Marshall prayed, Make us see that our liberty is not the right to do as we please, but rather the opportunity to please to do right. Secondly, we are never so free that we can treat other people just any way we want to treat them, regardless of the impact or the, in, or the pain that we inflict or the offense that we cause. Jesus said in the great commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. The Word of God tells us in Luke, the sixth chapter, just as you want people to treat you, Treat them in the very same way. That's called the, the golden rule, at least what we heard when we were growing up. Thirdly, we're never so independent that we no longer have a need for God. James writes in his letter, Every good thing bestowed and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights. Even as God fed the children of Israel on quail and manna and gave them water to drink in the wilderness when they were thirsty. God still provides for our daily needs. In this world, we, we talk in terms of self-made men or self-made women or self-made people. We need to remember something, that the sun, gifts of sunshine and rain and food and shelter and clothing that we wear and the air that we breathe these are gifts that are bestowed upon us by God Almighty and at His providential care. He doesn't have to do those things. And we are beholden to God for the blessings He gives us every day. And finally, we're never really free, not really. We're not free until we accepted God's gift of salvation from our sins through faith in Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul writes to the Roman church in chapter 8, there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. John's gospel bears some good news, doesn't it? John, Jesus said to Nicodemus, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him will not perish, but have everlasting life. It is a fact today, and I want you to hear me today. Hear my heart today. It is a fact that God loves you. No matter who you are, no matter what your life or your station or, or, or your lot in life may be, it doesn't matter to him how far you've gone into the faraway country like the prodigal son. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past. Everybody has a past. It doesn't matter where you are right now. The question is, where are you going from this day forward? Because God loves you no matter who you are or whatever your lot in life is. God desires it that, we, that everyone experience that is love and receive his grace, his mercy, and forgiveness to the fullest. That's why even though we're tragically separated from God by sin, we can still be saved through faith in Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. God has provided a way that we can be reconciled to him and to be saved from our sins. But there's some things that we have to do. First of all, we have to admit that we've sinned. We have to admit that we've sinned before God, that we have offended God, that we've stepped outside of his gracious limits of human conduct. We have to admit that we're sinners. The Bible tells us that in, in the book of, of Romans, the chapter 3 and verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In 1 John, the Bible tells us, if we say we have the, no sin, we deceive ourselves. We have to admit that we've sinned. Secondly, we have, to, we have to realize that we cannot save ourselves. The Bible tells us that we are saved by grace. In Ephesians chapter 2, in verses 8 and 9, it says that we are, the Bible says we are saved by grace. That is God's uh, um, undeserved unearned unmerited favor upon or pardon upon repentant sinners for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourself but it is a gift from God it is not a result of works lest any person to boast we have to realize that we can't save ourselves only Jesus can save us and we have to admit to ourselves we have to admit, we have to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and not just for our sins but for your sins your sins in particular. 
It doesn't do you any good to know that Jesus has died on the cross for my sins. The question is, do you know that Jesus Christ has died on the cross for your sins, even your sins, and that your sins, even your sins, are forgiven through repentance, through confession? That's what Calvary is all about. That's what the crucifixion was all about. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 5 that God demonstrated his love towards us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says Christ died for us according to the scriptures. We have to realize that God died on the cross for our sins, even ours. And we have to invite him. We have to invite Jesus Christ in simple childlike faith. We have to invite Jesus Christ to come into our life. We have to accept Jesus Christ in simple childlike faith as our Savior, our personal Savior. Because the Bible tells in chapter 1 of the Gospel of John, But as many who have received him, to them he gave them the right to become the children of God, even to those who believe in his name. I want you to listen to that phraseology. It tells it again, to them, those who receive him, to them he gave them the right to become children of God. I hear today in culture, and I hear today in our country, all around the world, people talk about we're all God's children. Just because God created you does not mean you're his child. That's not what the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us you become a child of God when, when, when you come to receive Jesus Christ. That's when you are become a child of God. Until then, until you know Jesus Christ as the Savior of your soul, the Lord of your life, until you receive him, you're not a child of God. Again, to them he gave them the right to become the children of God. I want to ask you a question today. Do you want to know Jesus Christ? as your Lord and Savior? Would you like to have that sweet assurance of your salvation and to eternal life, and one day you'll spend an eternity in heaven with Jesus, with God, with your loved ones that have outrun you to the Father's house but believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Would you like to do that? Would you want that assurance? You see, you can have that assurance today. You can have that assurance today, right now, at this very moment. You can. There are not a lot of things in life I, I don't know. There's a lot of things in life I don't know, but there are some things I do know. I know that I know that I know that I'm saved. I know simply because of I trust on God's words and his promises in the Bible. Things like, for example, when God says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I believe that because God's word tells me that, and I stand on that word. You can have that assurance of your salvation and your promise of eternal life. Remember what the promise that Jesus made to us in John 8 and chapter verse 36. We read it just a moment ago. If therefore the Son shall make you free, you will be freed. You will be free in, indeed. You see, you can have that assurance of your eternal salvation right now. At this very moment, I'm going to pray a prayer with you in just a second. You can pray silently. You can pray out loud, I, and I would encourage you to do that. This could be a day of salvation for you. This may, this may be the most important decision you make in your life. In the last, um, last month, as a matter of fact, I had the privilege of presiding over two wedding ceremonies. It was a joyous occasion, and I asked those couples some questions that were very important questions. One of the questions I asked them, will you, will you have this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife or will you have this, uh, be your, this man to be your lawfully wedded husband to live together in a holy estate of matrimony and so forth? You know, we asked them very important questions and, and they answered those questions and, they, and they, they, they make, a, they make a, a difference for the rest of their life. But the question I want to ask you today is not just about life in the here and now, I'm talking about do you want to be the bride of do you want to be the bride of Christ? Do you want to be part of the church of God? Do you want to know the surety of your salvation? The most important question you'll be ever asked in your life, do you accept Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life and the Savior of your soul? Do you want that assurance? I'd like to pray with you right now. 
You can know that today based on God's word. You can pray softly. You can pray silently. You can pray to yourself. You can pray out loud. But wherever you are, God hears that prayer. Whether you're riding down the road, listening to this service. If you, it could be that you're at home. You may be at the kitchen table. You, 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 you may be propped up in bed listening to this service on, your, on, on, on TV or on your cell phone. But right now you can know the assurance of salvation. Let me pray with you in a guided prayer right now. Lord God, I confess that I have sinned. I acknowledge your son Jesus Christ as your way of salvation. And I receive him by faith into my life as Savior, as my Savior and my Lord. On the authority of your promises in the Bible, I claim the assurance that you have pardoned and accepted me and saved me. I thank you, Lord, for the forgiveness of my sins and for eternal salvation. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. I want to encourage you to do something today. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life and the Savior of your soul, first of all, I would encourage you to tell somebody. You know, good news needs to be shared. I encourage you to tell somebody that today you've decided to follow Jesus. But I want to also encourage you today to, to, to find someone, me or someone else, another Christian, who will be praying for you in the journey that you'll, you'll be facing from this day forward as a believer in Jesus Christ as a part of the way. I invite you to find somebody who is a born-again believer, a Christian, who will pray with you along your journey. I want to encourage you today to begin even today, right now, reading through God's Word, reading the Bible, read, reading and studying the Word of God, the Bible, every day. God is speaking to you through that Bible. There are a lot of things about the Christian faith you'll want to know. There's a lot of things about the Christian faith I don't know yet. But I'm learning more and more the more I stay in the Word of God in the Bible. I encourage you to read in, in your Bible and study it every day. I also want to encourage you today to get involved if you're not already involved in a church somewhere where the Word of God is preached, the pure, absolute, unadulterated Word of God is preached, where the Bible is preached and Jesus Christ is glorified. And worshiped. I want to encourage you to go not just to any church, but go to a church where the word, the pure word of God is being preached. This is not about feeling good to be about in a church service somewhere. I'm, I'm asking you today to find a church home where the pure, unadulterated word of God is being preached, where the Bible is being preached as though it were authoritative in matters of faith and practice. And I want to encourage you to get involved in that church. And, and, and it could be that you don't have a church home today. You're welcome to be part of the family of God here at Epworth, but we don't have a monopoly on the Holy Spirit. Today I want to encourage you to, to find a church home where the Word of God, the pure Word of God is being preached and Jesus Christ is being exalted and, 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 and known as the Lord of people's lives and the Savior of their souls, that He's making a difference in people's lives. I encourage you to do that today. I want to be praying for you in the days to come. I encourage you to stay, to, 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 be, to let God fill you with his Holy Spirit and lead you along the path where you're headed. We ask all of this in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the great privileges we have in the church is to celebrate the Blessed Sacrament of Holy Communion. Again, if you've got your communion elements before you, you may have stopped by the church earlier this week and gotten those. I, you want to get those now, now would be the time to do it. But first of all, I, I want to begin uh, with an invitation to Holy Communion. Um, it, it's a simple invitation. You don't have to be Methodist. You don't have to be a member of this church. Uh, you don't have to be a member of a church anywhere. To receive this invitation. You to do truly and earnestly repent of your sins. And are in love and charity with your neighbor. And intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God. Draw near with faith. And take this holy sacrament to your comfort. I want to share some scripture with you today. Some words of comfort. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son 
that whosoever believeth on him will not perish but have everlasting life. The Word of God tells us that if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, who is Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but also for the sins of the world. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hear now these words of confession. I invite your heart. I invite you to join me in this prayer of confession. Almighty God, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought and word and deed against thy divine majesty we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings the remembrance of them is grievous unto us have mercy upon us have mercy upon us most merciful father and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name and this we ask in the precious the priceless and the perfect name of jesus who is called the christ and let all God's people say, Amen. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to God. He broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper is over, Jesus took the cup. And he gave thanks to you. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, Drink from this all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ. We remember these things about Jesus. Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. I thank you so much for celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion with us today. I hope you've taken these, this sacrament to your comfort. I want to pray with you for just a moment. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the blessed sacrament and the blessed privilege of being called a child of God through simple childlike faith in Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we give ourselves to you. We give all that we know about ourselves to all that we know about you. Come into our heart, Lord Jesus. God, I pray if there's anyone here today that's listening who doesn't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they put it off. They even put it off just a moment ago in that prayer we prayed. I pray that this would be a moment of salvation. I pray that in their heart of hearts, they would just say simple, a simple childlike prayer of faith. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Lord, I ask this in the priceless and the perfect name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. As Kevin comes to lead us in our closing, uh, in our closing hint song, um, we're going to ask him to do that. We're going to sing one of our familiar songs. He'll be uh, aware of that when he comes and shares with us. I want to just uh, remind you that we love you and that God and Jesus loves you best of all. I want to encourage you to keep your hand in Jesus' hand and your eyes on the cross. Um, we look forward to, to spending that day one time when we'll get back together in person. But until then, again, I thank you for your faithfulness. And I invite your attention again as we have this invitation as you're singing this song and you decide you want to come to know Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life and the Savior of your soul. There's nothing magic about the prayers that we have prayed today. In fact, that I can remember probably the shortest prayer 
to receive Christ was in, in the temple one day when the Pharisee and the publican, the sinner, was in, in, in the temple. And the sinner, the publican, prayed out loud. He wouldn't even look up towards heaven. He humbled himself before God in humility. And he said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus said, that day, that man went back to his house justified. I invite you just a simple childlike prayer of faith. Lord, be merciful to me. Brother Kevin is going to come and lead us now in our closing song. Would you join me in our closing hymn, Faith of Our Fathers. able to keep you from falling and to present you without fault before the presence of his glory with exceeding gladness to the only wise God our Savior Jesus Christ be glory and majesty and dominion and power both now and forevermore and let all God's people say amen